Hello and welcome to another video from Dazatron's Diorama Llama. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an Autobot Arc Breakate. So here's a sneak preview of what it looks like at the end. Um, it is kind of, it's been through the walls a little bit, so to speak. So um, it's kind of got battle damage on there. And yeah, I'll talk you through that in a moment. So I'm just going to show you the left hand side first, how I made that piece, because it's very different to the right hand side. So if you've seen my previous video on how to make the kind of rock formation break out, um, if you haven't, do check that out on the channel. Um, it's a good introduction to this kind of technique. Um, when you saw that, although it wasn't symmetrical, it was very much a rock face on each side. Whereas with this piece, um, both sides really are very different, I would say, in the, in the final outcome. So you just need a block. This is a two inch block of styrofoam. And I've kind of measured out how high my shelf will be. If you're using a bit of bookshelf like I do, the kind of width of the, the wood itself, the frame is just under, um, I think it's a quarter, three quarters of an inch, sorry. Yeah, three quarters of an inch or just under two centimetres. So I'm just going to measure that out and mark that out. And I can't really give you the actual dimensions for that because your setup will be very different to mine. And that's the nice thing about Billy Bookshelves is that you can kind of arrange them and move them around uh, or customise them as you wish. So it's going to be very unique to your setup. But the key thing is just literally hold your styrofoam block next to your Billy bookcase, mark out where the frames are and then essentially draw that out. So what you can see I'm doing here is I'm just kind of cutting away where the block will kind of sit flush against um, the wooden unit itself. So I'm trying to cut away where the shelves would be so it kind of slots into the shelf. So I'm just using a coping saw, is that right? My mind went blank then. Um, but again, use whatever you've got at hand. Whether that's a hacksaw, whether you've got a electric foam cutter, one of the kind of um, the table versions or the tabletop version, should I say. Um, yeah, all of those will work really well. So again, I'm just cutting away where I want that indent to be. Now, if you watched the, again, the rock formation break out, you'd see it was like an L shape. Whereas with this one, it's a C shape because it's going to sit flush um, not only on the bottom part of the shelf, but the top of the shelf as well. Now, yeah, just a quick tip here. Just keep these um, kind of off cuts, any kind of bits of styrofoam that you get. Just keep them in a little pot because they will come in. Um, if you've watched my Thunder Tank um, diorama, you'll see where I used those bits to kind of create a, a nice texture for the base. So it is worth keeping all your little bits. I keep all of my off cuts for styrofoam because they always come in. So even these bits that I'm coming off, cutting off now. Um, just keep them, keep them in a bag somewhere and I guarantee you, you'll use them at some point. So what I'm doing here is I've marked out my kind of shape, my design. And I've just taken this from the movie itself. I've literally kind of just photographed some stills from the 1986 Transformers, the movie. And I'm just looking at those kind of designs, those kind of that background art um, to get an idea of the shapes that you see um, on the Autobot arc itself. So that's why I've chosen this kind of design. And you can, again, you can come up with your own version. Um, and that's why I created two different designs, really, so you can kind of see, you know, the variety that you can get from that. There's, there's so much more you could do. Just to have a look at the background art. I mean, it's stunning background art in the 86 movie. Yeah, just freeze frame your video. I'm sure you've all got it. Um, 
and yeah, take some photographs, which is what I did, and I used that there as my reference. I'm sure you could Google it as well. So you can see even here, the the piece of styrofoam fits flush even against my um, my work surface there in the kitchen. So I'm just using the file just to kind of smooth that down and just to kind of make those edges nice and neat so they kind of look like, you know, they have been kind of manufactured or, you know, it's beaten metal. I don't want it to be kind of organic looking as you did with the rock formation. It needs to look... Um, yeah, a lot more kind of, I suppose, as if it's been kind of, yeah, cut by a robot, if you like. So I'm using a large file here. So it does take a bit of work at this point, because if you're cutting particularly with an electric foam cutter, you don't get a really nice, neat cut, not unless you're using a tabletop version, which I don't have because they're a lot more expensive. So just working back in with the floristry knife just to get those edges a bit smoother. And the larger fire here just kind of just makes that job a lot quicker. So you do want to work at this from every angle. Do you remember this is a sculpture, so you will see it from multiple sides. The only part that you won't see is the back. So, yeah, I'm not too fussed how that looks, really, because that would be flush against the uh, the bookcase. As long as it fits and it's flush to the, um, the case itself, then that's what you're looking for. Now, you do sometimes get a textured surface on the styrofoam. Um, it almost has like a glittery effect, so it is worthwhile just filing that down as well. Um, because sometimes it even shows up once you've painted it, and you get this kind of glittery effect coming through, which I didn't really want. So you can see I'm doing the sides here. And again, I'm keeping all of that sawdust. Well, it's not sawdust, it's styrofoam dust, but, you know, that's what it reminds me of. I'm just keeping that in a little jar for future use. So you saw I just checked it against the bookcase itself just to see if it fits okay, which it did. And now I'm just marking out some details. And it is worth marking these out because if you do it freehand, um, mistakes will happen. So I'm just marking in some lines with a pencil. And this is just the easiest way to get some nice details so rather than just being a flat surface, it just, as I said, it looks more interesting. So even a blunt pencil works nice with this. Obviously you don't want to press too hard, but enough to make an indent. And you can see that better there. And I'm going to do the same on the other two parts. So here I'm just looking for my reference just to get some ideas of what I could do on the sides. So I do particularly like, there you go, those screenshots. And so I'm just marking out some panels here. Now when I'm going over this with the pencil, I'm not going ev over every pen line that I've made. So you can see those kind of corners there. I want to leave those corners as they are. I'm just cutting the triangles out in this case. And again, all these details make a massive difference to the overall look. So yeah, so this was actually an off cut from, you can see how it fit inside um, the side of this piece of styrofoam. And I just thought it looked quite cool actually using that on the front. So I've just taken some of the off cuts and I'm just shaping them how I want to really. If I want to give it a curved design or a more angular design, it really is up to you. And I'm just using, um, I can't remember the grit actually on this sandpaper. But this is quite, this is not, not such a, a fine 
grit on here. It's a bit, bit of a rougher texture just to, again, shape this piece of styrofoam until I'm happy, really, the result. And this is such a subjective thing. It really is up to you what shapes you go for. You don't have to do exactly what I've done here. I'm just giving you some ideas. So the sandpaper is really good just for tackling the whole block and making sure everything's smooth and all the edges are flush and parallel with one another. And that means you're gonna get a good kind of contact then between this block and the, the main piece of styrofoam that I wanna attach it to. And that's really important, you don't want any gaps. Now I find with the Autobot Arc, you do get some nice kind of angular surfaces, but you also get these kind of nice smooth uh, kind of curved surfaces as well. So it's kind of getting a mixture between the two, which I quite like. So I'm just working on the bottom piece now in exactly the same way. Started off with the file and then using the sandpaper just to get the shape that I want. And again, this isn't a new piece of styrofoam. This was an off cut from the original piece. So you're not wasting anything. And it does, in the end, it does work out much cheaper than buying a diorama or buying these kind of background kits um, online. And it makes it unique to you and to your display. And that's really the purpose of these videos is to give you ideas of how to make a unique display. So I'm quite liking those shapes. Yeah, and if you want to add any kind of circular elements, it's really good just to actually um, push into the surface. Now I'm using the top here of um, fry light. So it's what you use in cooking. So it's quite a small lid. So I'm using that just to kind of press into the styrofoam. And it's much easier than using the pencil where you'd have to draw it out yourself freehand and that's quite tricky to use. So by using something like a lid, it just makes that um, look much better really. So I'm just doing the same on the other sides, trying to get in about the same place. They usually in my in my early videos I've used Gorilla Glue, but for this one I'm using Loctite, just super glue. You get it in a free pack. I managed to pick this up on sale for I think it was 50p. Um I still think it's only a few pounds. And you just squeeze a little bit on there, and this literally dries in minutes. So it's much, much quicker to use than the Gorilla Glue. I think you can pick up a version of Gorilla Glue that does the same kind of thing if you particularly or if you prefer that brand. Um, and it is a good brand. I do recommend using Gorilla Glue. But for this, I wanted it to be flush. Um, sometimes with the Gorilla Glue that I use, it expands. It's kind of a, a foam um, and it doesn't always... Um, give you such a neat finish. It's great for things like rocks and more organic surfaces. But with this, I wanted it to be really flush. So um, the Loctite for me works better. So you can see here, I've continued to add those details. And the more detail you can add, the better. Um, it just gives it more of that kind of, well, it makes it kind of look futuristic. Um, it gives it more kind of, I suppose, a technologically advanced kind of feel to it. I don't know if that would be the right way of describing it, but, but you get what I mean. It looks like it's made out of different panels. So I'm using a small file here, just a flat ended file, just to kind of create an indent in some of the details. And here I'm using the rod tool on the electric foam cutter. So you get a couple of these with the foam cutter that I purchased and the rod itself heats up. So obviously be careful of it, don't touch it. And it, it melts the styrofoam really quickly and it's great. 
for adding this kind of battle damage. All I would say is be very careful. Be very light-handed when you're using it. Um, but you can just get these kind of scuff marks as if you've kind of got, you know, lasers and gunshots going off. And, yeah, I think it just really adds to the overall effect. Do make sure, yeah, the, um, the rod itself is cool before you put it on your surface, otherwise it will melt your surface. So again, I'm using some small, thin offcuts here, just to make it look like the kind of the metal has been kind of peeled away. Again, when you watch the 1986 Transformers the movie, you'll see moments where, yeah, it looks like the metal has been kind of pulled apart as the Decepticons have been attacking the Autobot arc. So um, I'm just trying to create that feel. This is meant to look like it's been blasted. My daughter said it looked like the um, creature from Stranger Things. She kind of does, really. Yeah, the Demi-Gorgon. That's it, isn't it? So, yeah, so I've added those extra features. And now we've come to the part where we need to paint um, the styrofoam itself so i'm using gold there so that's the more kind of shiny version that one that's open there's the yellow ochre which it, it has a golden look to it it's more of a golden brown but it's not a metallic finish and then you've got the reddish brown which is the burnt sienna but i'm going to start with just black acrylic and i'm just using a large brush and i'm just pushing the black acrylic into all of those details so a larger brush or a smaller brush will do. Again, whatever you've got at home, at hand. And I'm just pushing that into those indents that I made with the pencil or with the file. And even the kind of the, yeah, the, the battle worn areas. As you know, when I'm painting the, the rock formations, I usually paint the whole thing black. But because this is a lighter colour, I don't want to um I don't want to make it too dark. So by just painting into those indents, it just means they're gonna kind of stand out when I start to paint the lighter areas on top a bit later on. So this is just regular black acrylic. Do not pay expensive for your acrylics. Cheap acrylics will do. You can pick them up from lots of places. Um, the Works Bookstore in the UK. You can pick them up from even places like um, Bargain Madness, B&M. You can pick them up from Home Bargain sometimes. Even in Poundland, have a look around. You can pick up cheap acrylics. You can go to places like Hobbycraft and Arrange, but you will pay a little bit more expensive for them. It just depends what you want. So I'm using the burnt sienna and I'm using a larger brush now on top. And what I'm trying to do is keep the flat end of the brush against the surface of the styrofoam. So I'm just rubbing it across the top because I don't want to get inside those grooves. I want to keep the grooves as dark as I can. So I'm just trying to pull it along the top. So this bit takes a while. Sometimes it's worth actually adding a little bit of water to the acrylic, depending on how thick the acrylic is. If you buy acrylic in tubes, it does tend to come out a little bit thicker. If you're using kind of hobby paint acrylic, so what you would use for kind of Warhammer figures, then it tends to be a much thinner consistency already because it's, it's kind of made that way for miniatures where you wanted to get it into all those details. Because I'm painting larger flat areas, I tend to find um, the thicker acrylic works better. I would say don't use your Warhammer acrylics on this because you'll waste them and they're very expensive. So do keep things like that for miniatures. So I've got a, a reasonable covering on here. Don't forget, this isn't the final colour. This is just the undercoat. 
so i've just moved to a smaller brush just to kind of make some of those areas a bit stronger in color because as i've moved over the black area sometimes it's mixed with the black and it's created a darker finish so i'm just going back over some of the places with the burnt sienna just to make that color a little bit redder now you'll know with the arc it does have this kind of almost copper finish kind of a reddish um, or kind of golden color so i'm moving now on to mixing a bit of the burnt sienna so the red that i've just used with the metallic gold and what that does, it creates a lighter finish, but it also gives it um, a bit of a metallic kind of finish to it. And I think that really works. It really makes it kind of pop, especially when you've got a light source on there. So this is the second piece. So again, you can see I've already cut that kind of C shape. And I'm deciding again what details I want. I'm going back to the similar, the same image that I used before for some ideas. And I'm just marking out some sections here. So I'm using the electric foam cutter here. So you can see this is the wire tool. And I just want to create um, a more tapered edge to it. You could use the saw blade for this, no problem. So I've kind of marked off the angle that I want on this edge. And I've used the electric foam cutter to cut that. And I'm just using now a file just to get that nice and neat and kind of smooth it all down and get the the angle that I want by having the two guidelines there it really helps so it is always a good idea to use something like a sharpie pen just to mark out your features and it just gives you something to work from and I just think that looks better than the kind of you know the um, the right angle that it was before So I'm now marking out again some details based on that reference photo that you saw very briefly earlier. And I'm using the small files. Again, you could pick up these files from any kind of DIY store. You don't have to pay expensive for them. These cost a few pounds for a set of about five or six of these mini files. And they've been so useful with my makes. You'll, you'll have seen me use them many, many times. So you can see the bits here where I've added the lines in. Those are the areas that I want to cut away. So I'm just using that small file just to cut into and make an indent into the surface. And I'm just marking out how deep I want that indent to go. And again, it's a good idea to do that. So you know when to stop. And it just means you get a much more professional looking finish really. So I'm also using it to smooth out the sides as well. To kind of create those kind of angles. And it really is just a case of just trying stuff out. It doesn't matter if it goes wrong, I guarantee you, you could fix it, you could cut it away again. You know, th there's always a solution. So yeah, I'm just starting to make an indent on the edge. You will find it starts to pull away the styrofoam in clumps. If you press quite heavy with a file, it tends to do that so you have to be quite careful sometimes you have to press quite hard at first just to get um, the depth that you want 
and then you have to press much lighter to smooth it out. And again, you'll get a feel for that as you start to use the, uh, the tools and the equipment. So I just think that gives a more interesting look to the piece. Now these things here, these are actually from um, the COVID tests. So the lateral flow tests, these are the little pots that you put the solution in. Um, but I thought they looked great. I really love the detail on the one side. So I've just kind of kept a few of those. I thought I'd use those within this make. So it is a good idea just to kind of, yeah, keep hold of things, keep hold of kind of caps and bottle lids and stuff if they've got an interesting shape to them. So if you've got any of these COVID tests, they're, they're really cool for that. So I'm just kind of measuring out where the hole will be. So I want these to kind of push right into the styrofoam. So because it'd be difficult to use a saw for this, um, or even a craft knife because it's quite a deep cut. I'm using the rod tool on the electric foam cutter again. Now, do be careful that you don't go right up to your edge. So when you've measured out your kind of shape, just leave an edge. Go on the inside of the shape that you've measured or drawn out because you do find that the um, it spreads. So the way, way it melts the styrofoam, it spreads out. So if you did it right on the edge, you would not get a neat edge to that. So I'm just using, a again, a file just to make those, those shapes a bit more square because you don't get a neat cut with the rod tool. But they do push in really easily because the styrofoam is quite soft. And again, I just think that creates a bit of interest to the piece that you might not have those. I appreciate that. But see what else you can find. So you can see I've got the, yeah, the two sides in place there and exactly the same technique as we did before. I'm using the black acrylic paint to get into those details. Now I'm using um, a rigger brush here. So this is a very long bristled brush just to get into those kind of deep areas. And you do find with the plastic, the acrylic can easily scratch off. Generally, you tend to sand down plastic before um, using acrylic on the top of it. But I haven't in this case because it's not gonna get, um, it's just gonna be on display. So it shouldn't really get scratched all that much. So I'm using the burnt sienna again just to give it an undercoat and the big brush. And you can also see I've used the rod tool again to create some battle damage. So it kind of matches nicely with the, the other side. Again, with brushes, if you go to a, you know, a proper art store, you'll pay a lot of money for brushes. Just pick up some cheap ones. And you get them from all of the places that I mentioned before. So you can see I've added details on all the sides as well. So it looks like um, this section is made out of different panels. The great thing about the setup for this, if this is the first video you've seen, it doesn't cost a lot of money to get set up, to buy yourself some acrylic, some brushes, some styrofoam, and even a cutter. You know, you'd be talking less than 50 pounds for all of that, and you can use it again and again and again. And that's the beauty of this, is that once you've got the equipment, you've, you've got it for a long time. So again, like before, I'm just adding some more of the burnt sienna just to make that colour a bit stronger in places where it's mixed with the black. 
Now I do quite like leaving actually some of the that kind of black um smoky effect particularly around the battle damage because it just reminds me of smoke damage so you can see there where that big hole is i've kind of left some of that black around the edge and you can always paint it back in just water down the black or do a dry brush effect and it just adds to the detail So I'm coming to the end of that bit now. Do make sure you do all the parts that can be seen. This piece is going to go on the top of my Billy bookshelf, so they're kind of the top shelf. Um, so I am going to see the bottom from below. So it depends where yeah, the position of your bookcases are. Now, of course, this won't work for a detail shelf. So if you've got glass cabinets, whether they're from Ikea or somewhere else, um, this effect won't really, won't really work that much. You could do something similar, actually, for the base, so it hangs over the edge. That might work. Depends if you've got a, if it's a cabinet, though. So if you've got a door on the front, then again, that wouldn't work. But do look at the channel. I've made plenty of bases that would work. So again, I'm using the gold mixed with the burnt sienna. And it just tones down the yellow of the gold. and just makes it a little bit more orange. And I think that works better for the Autobot City. Now, do actually finish both of these pieces with... Um, a metallic kind of copper paint you don't have to do that um, I just found it toned it down a little bit more and just made it a little bit more orange so it depends on the finish that you want you could just add more burnt sienna to the gold metallic paint um, and get it to the um, the shade or the tone that you you desire so yeah where the some of the gold paint might have gone inside some of the details I've just taken that rigor brush or as fine a brush as you've got and I've just added a little bit more of a watered down black acrylic inside those kind of those cracks and those details and I'm just adding more of the smoke effect on there just to finish that off just kind of dabbing that in with my fingers as well and a good way to kind of finish some of those details is to use a bit of silver so I've painted those little plastic kind of features with silver. I've also painted inside some of the battle damaged areas. Yeah, so here's the metallic copper I was talking about. And you can see the difference on that. It does have a more orange kind of feel to it. Hence why it's copper not gold and I'm not using it all over I'm just using it in some places yeah a really good tip you know don't waste your acrylics I've got these kind of like Tupperware pots here so I tend to use those just to kind of keep my acrylics in there now you will have seen me use this um, before if you look to my other breakout video this is just an adhesive backed um, magnetic strip if you like so it's a piece of a4 um kind of flat magnet that you can kind of cut up so i've just measured out a strip of that cut it into smaller squares and then you can just peel off the adhesive and put it in place so just decide where you want the magnets to be and this is just a really good way of connecting it to your bookcase without causing any damage to the bookcase itself. Yeah, so I've removed, a good tip here is to remove the adhesive off the second piece, the piece that will actually go onto the bookcase. Put it on the magnets. So when you then push it in place, as I'm doing here, I'm just moving 
that out of the way, what will happen is the adhesive will catch onto the shelf. And you can see how it's kept now, those magnets in place. So I've just kind of lined them up, straighten them up a little bit, and then just kind of push them in a bit firmer. And then that way you haven't got to kind of measure things to get them, you know, to kind of um, tally up. And then here's the finished piece. So, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the overall look of this. I hope you like it too. And if you did enjoy this video, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Feel free to make comments as well, um, you know, some ideas. I know some of you already have asked me about a Castle Grace School breakout, so do look out for that. That is in the pipeline. But I just think this really gives a, a nice finish to your display shelves. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Do tune in again. And don't forget, make it happen.